Now, since I do not need this old uh, Acer Aspire 1 netbook anymore, I thought, how does Windows 10, the latest operating system from Microsoft, run on this hardware? Now, just remember, this is a netbook, not an ultrabook. This uses an Intel Atom processor, it has 2 gigs of RAM, and 110 gigabyte SSD. So it's not really a powerhouse. Now what I did in the past when I used this, uh, I always used Linux on it because it was way snappier, faster, just overall better for the hardware. Now I haven't tried Windows 7 on the SSD, but Windows 8 wasn't too bad. Now unfortunately when you compare the system requirements of Windows 10 and Xubuntu in my case, you will find that Windows 10 requires at least a gig of RAM with the 32-bit version and I think 2 gigs with the 64-bit version and Xubuntu just needs 256 megabytes so it's definitely a little uh, difference there but I installed on here Windows 10 32-bit home and let's see how it goes We'll start here with a uh, code boot, which you will find out isn't actually that slow. And since respecting this is an Intel Atom based computer, under a minute boot time is ridiculously good, especially being on the latest operating system. But is all its hardware still working since it's officially from Acer only supported on Windows 7 starter? I think we should take a look. Believe it or not guys, but I only had to do one single manual driver installation and that was the card reader which its driver was just the old Windows 7 version that just worked fine on Windows 10 but the rest of all this hardware was after some updating just installed by Windows which is great I would say. Now as we all know netbooks don't really have the greatest graphics and mine is no exception. This uses an old Intel graphics card with only 256 megabytes of RAM so how is it actually on rendering all the animations? Is it awful, sluggish, lethargic? Now you might be surprised but Microsoft did a really good job on making these animations possible on even lower end machines. Take a look, this is for example the settings app and you do not see a single lag when scrolling through this. I could not really say that from Windows 8 respecting that in Windows 8 I couldn't even use some of the apps because it, the, the, the screen was just too small but of course it has have here and there one or two little lags uh, as you can see when I was snapping here there is a little frame drop here and there but just overall I mean this is a netbook with <laughs> an old graphics card that isn't even meant to run Windows 10 officially so I think it's more than enough to say that this is still actually rather good. I didn't really want to run any benchmarking software since we all know that gaming on a netbook isn't really the best idea. So just for all or overall usage, you get the idea. It does work. Here and there we have some lags, but I think it, it's fine. Another thing is Windows 10 does somehow re-support netbooks. Why am I saying this? Well, this display only has 1024 by 76 uh, by 600 resolution. Now, Metro apps or modern UI apps or however they're called, they always needed at least 1024 by 768. That, of course, meant I could not run any um, any Metro apps or modern UI apps. On this netbook on Windows 8 or 8.1 since the display was just a little too small. Now with Windows 10 since they all run in like in a windowed mode it I mean as you can see the, the calculator that wasn't even possible on, on Windows 8.1 or the, the Maps app no problem so you do actually gain functionality 
when you upgrade to Windows 10 uh, from let's say 8.1 if you run it on netbook unfortunately I do not really use these modern UI apps so I can't really guarantee you that all of them are gonna launch on your little display but the ones I tested the mail the calculator and the stuff you saw that all worked fine and actually rather fast so how is actually application respondents on Windows 10 now I have two applications that I use heavily and that I know that on some computers just take forever to launch one of them is LibreOffice and one of them is NetBeans now let's launch first LibreOffice Yeah, that wasn't really the fastest boot up in the world, but I think you can do it. Just launch it. A document here. There we go. Now it's ready to type. Or not. Yeah. There I can say this is the first downside on running Windows 10 on this. First when I ran Xubuntu, LibreOffice was just way quicker and just just overall a little snappier. But that comes back that this machine only has 2 gigs of RAM and that it's now running Windows and not Linux. Don't forget that guys. Now to continue my little test startup thing. We launch NetBeans. I do use this really a lot. Now, this isn't really a real world test since in my pro uh, computers I always have a load of projects open. So it's, it would just take long, I can tell you this. And this wasn't really that much better on Linux either. Now, this was only a startup without anything open. Now, let's actually make a little project there. And yeah, let's do a PHP. Then I'm going to tell you why this isn't really a good idea to do. <laughs> yeah. The fan is going full blast and uh, yeah, I think it's out of RAM. That is bad, but I only have one application open. What can you do? It's just an atom and you don't really get the greatest performance out of it when it comes to Java or anything that is in this area. Now I have to admit I didn't really do some heavy duty programming on Linux either but it was here and there a little quicker on whatever just launching project creating a project it was just a little better overall. So I launched here some three little heavier websites and as you can see the poor Adam is already locking up when he tries to play back a YouTube video so you know where you're getting when you try to browse a web site that is a little more intense on a little laser machine that can't really catch up with uh, <laughs> with any, any of these websites And also, how is multitasking on Windows? Just forget it. You won't get past maybe three applications without sitting there and just thinking about why you did that. So, to conclude this whole thing, is it actually worth installing Windows 10 on your old SSD-based netbook? Well, hell yes. If you really badly need Windows, you have supported hardware, you, it's actually not that slow if you're not really having anything open, maybe just one or two applications. And three, it is still supported then, so you can still run everything.
slow, but you can run everything. You may also really badly want to use these new Windows 10 features, which all work perfectly. And you don't want to spend money on a new Ultrabook or tablet. And if you're a patient guy and you just do a little writing and you need Windows, go ahead. Nothing stands against Windows 10 on your old laptop. Be aware of the fact though that my netbook has an SSD. If yours has like a gigabyte of RAM and, and 54 an RPM hard drive, the story will be a little different. Meaning you shouldn't install Windows 10 and you shouldn't install Windows 8 either. You should go with Linux, guys. So what am I doing with it now? Do I keep Windows 10 or do I reinstall my X Ubuntu? I'm not sure yet. I'm definitely going to keep it for a while and try some more stuff and maybe make another video. But for now, that's it. I can definitely confirm that it's a good idea to install Windows 10 on an old netbook. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.